Look, Chief, I know how you feel. You don't show no sign of even beginning to understand how I feel. Look, you think you've been lumbered with a car that's no good. Too right. Then I definitely know how you feel, because the car you traded in was shocking garbage. It was better than the one you sold me. Oh, well. Oh, well, if it was that wonderful, why was you trying to get rid of it, eh? Ah! <laughs> Cyril, Cyril, that's no way to go on with the customers shouting and jeering and prodding them in the chest. What seems to be the trouble, sir? You know, it's only through that car that I've learned that the man at the MOT station is a fellow Catholic. Oh, why? Yeah, because he says it's that far gone that I want to pay for a test or a requiem mass. Very much, Chief. You sent for a read. Look, I want some satisfaction. I want redress for my grievance. I want my rights under the Sale of Goods Act. I want reparation made. You mean you want us to do something about it? Brilliant. Them cars. You could have one that was as right as rain, but it still wouldn't get through the M.O.T. Because they're not giving them. They're facing them out. Because they were too good, you know, like in the day. They lasted too long. Look, I'd love to take it off you, but I can't. My hands are tied. I'm literally not allowed to under the official motor trade policy. This is all God's wall of this. You're just trying to fob me off with a load of rubbish. But all you dealing, isn't it? Rubbish. Bloody rubbish. Well, if you're going to use language like that, that's it, Chief, on your way. There's only one language the likes of you understand. All right, Chief. And what's that? <laughs> Declan. <laughs> so, if you want a conversation in the only language you understand, I think you'll find that my cousin Declan here speaks it fluently. I said they'd be awkward. You'd be an awkward, are you? Hey, hey! Now I need that nonsense, and it'll have to be the scuffers. I will not. I will not <laughs> put up with indecent language and threatening behaviour. I haven't threatened you yet. I must point out to you, sir, that if you are thinking of anything along that line, my brother here is a professional bouncer. <laughs> Oh, only, only as a professional. Uh, I happen to belong to a professional body with a very, very strict code of conduct. I, I am strictly barred from any kind of argy-bargy in a public place. Otherwise, I'd sling your ice off here now. Oh, you would, would you? I would. Only I'd be risking my professional standing, so... Uh... Uh, what is the exact rule, Wes? Um, any member of the Institute of Chartered Bouncers may not engage in fisticuffs or argy-bargy except on approved licensed premises and under the direction of the licensee or his designated deputy thereof. Licensed premises? All right. We'll go down a pub and I'll knock the bejesus out of you down there. Oh, no, good, good, good. I'd have to be actually employed by the licensee to throw you out. Uh, rule 7, part 3. He says the brains are pink. And I reckon that they're... grey. So why don't we find out, eh? We'll fix it up with approved premises, Chief. And I don't see the Institute of Bouncers can argue with the Queensbury rules, can they? So either I see me money, or we see the champ here down at St Ignatius Paola Sports Hall. You've got a week. Up to you. And if you don't show, don't worry, we'll catch up with you. And the Marquis of Queensbury certainly won't be getting involved. Are we talking about the full ring now? Gloves, the lot. That's the way you want it. Right? Right? <laughs> My boy will be ready. <laughs> There's plenty of food in, Glenys. Only don't cook them sausages in the fridge. Don't cook the sausages. No, cos I'm suspending judgement on them. Pending, you know. How do you mean, pending? Well, I already had them in me bag when the health inspector arrived. But the rest of them sausages, they've been took away for testing. Well, don't you think it'd be best to chuck them away, like? Oh, no. We'll see when we know how the test comes out. It might be all right, just sweating a bit. <laughs> I mean, they've closed the calf down, but that's only temporary. Does that mean you're out of work? Oh, I fell on me feet, Glenys. You know Maisie that works at the Black Cat Calf? Well, her leg's gone sceptic, not surprising. <laughs> And Mr. Evans was desperate to find a relief. You're felt, ma'am? Yeah. I'm just going down to help Mrs. Catrick, you know. 
They're sending her mother to Lewards. <laughs> Since any spare seats left, put my name down. <laughs> what for? So, Ballard, that fella, Cyril, you've got nothing to worry about. What fella? Worry about what? His own mouth, you'll floor him. It's a fella Cyril's got a fight with. A face with who? Oh, just a customer. Oh, well, I'd have his sympathy with him. <laughs> One look at him, Cyril, and you could tell he was just not a fit man. I mean, when he picked you up there, he was breathing very heavy. <laughs> oh, I, oh, oh, I still... You know, like, in the interest of, uh, like, like, customer relations, on this occasion, the smart thing might be to, uh, take back the motor. What are you saying, Cyril? I told you what I'm saying, Wes. I've just said it! It's not what you're saying to me, Cyril. What you are saying is chicken out. I'm not saying that at all, Wes. Much as I'd like to give him a lesson in the noble art, I am saying that it might be hey, that... Cyril, interest... hey, we are not backing down to this fella for two reasons. One, if one gets away with it, where does it end? They'll all be doing it. And two, he wants his 300 quid back, which we are not going to give him. Why? Because we haven't got 300 quid. <laughs> Fuck me logic if you can, Cyril. No, you just have to get in there training. <laughs> Last five seconds, Cyril. Come on, go, go, go! <laughs> OK, Cyril. <laughs> right. Some work on the heavy bag. This is your bloke, Cyril. Imagine this is the fella. Think yourself into it. Psych yourself up. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Feel the hate. Hate. Hate! <laughs> now, go to it, Cyril. Go to it. OK, son. All right, just try it. Hey, watch yourself. <laughs> Don't start something you can't finish, sunshine. Cyril, what are you doing? Just psyching myself up, Wes. Come on, Cyril, will you get stuck in? Let's see you work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Cyril, let me explain the Queensbury rules to you. Well, Mrs McGregor, if Mr Shard does end up doing time, you'll be all right. Always be a job here for you. Full time, I mean. Means a lot to me to hear you say that, Mr Evans. Because it means I've given satisfaction, which is what I've been trying to do the early of my life. <laughs> well, you can't get trained staff that know the business. I mean, it's little things I've noticed, like... Clearing up, I've seen you. The way you get the sauce off the neck with your finger and just <laughs> flick it back in the bottle. That's taken years. It's Mr Shard to thank really with his staff training courses. Ah, well, when I see a waitress with your experience, Mrs McGregor, I'm more than happy to pay the full 50 pence an hour. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else. When I see a waitress as experienced as you, I count the lamb chops very carefully. <laughs> Double sausage, egg and chips, that table over there. Lads. Hey, Jack, you all right? Yeah, laughing. Listen, I've seen this fella. You can't get a bet on. No one put a price on you. It seems just like a walkover. <laughs> well, we'll just have to do what the pros do. Put a few rumours round. <laughs> you the double sausage egg and chips twice? Yeah, that's over here, look, bro. Uh, no, the boat is, love. Oh. <laughs> big eater. Well, he's a big fella, isn't he? Does he always have two dinners? He does when he's in training. Oh, what's he in training for? Well, he's fighting this fella. Well, I say fighting. He's going to knock him witless. But we want him good and strong. Over some point of honour, is it? Like a duel? Is there such a thing as honour among thieves, missus? Because that's all these fellas are. They sold me a car. There was everything wrong with it. But you try to talk about the law to these fellas and they laugh at you. Yeah. I know from the tales my lads bring home, because they're in the trade. Motor trade, you know. Oh, I'm not saying they're all villains, no. Oh, no. Oh, well, he's not saying they're all villains, no. you know. But these fellas, cowboys, isn't that right, Deck? Cowboys, yeah. Well, they've got to the Alamo this time. Oh, shock around there, isn't it? You wouldn't want to go near them, flat to the statue line. Big fella like him, Cyril. The thing is to keep him on the move, tire him out. Oh, Mike. Don't let him get you on the ropes. Just backpedal and keep spearing him with the jab. Yeah, yeah. Working the jab all the time. Mr Morris at school, you know, he always used to say I had fast hands. <laughs> yeah, but he was talking about the pilfering out the cloakroom, sir. <laughs> no, he wasn't, Wes. So, this is the great white hope, eh? Hello there, Mr Stanley. They're laying very long odds against you, Sil. So I've come round to see if there's any way it's worth sticking a fiver on you. Oh, they're also laying odds on the forecast, you know. <laughs> forecast? Between your head and your feet. Which order they leave the ring? Six to four, your head goes out before your feet. 
<laughs> Even as they carry you out feet first. Aye. You stick your money on the nose, Mr Stanley. Once he's tasted a few of them jabs... <laughs> uh, you call them jabs? Get some beef behind it, lad. You're not powdering a baby's bottom, you know. Hey, yeah, and you want to practice putting a cross in after the jabs and all, Cyril, you know, like this. <laughs> oh, no, no. You've got to get your weight right, Wesley. It's all from the feet when you're putting a cross in. You've got to bring it round. No, Mr Stanley, look, this is the way you work. You put your guard up, Cyril, right? <laughs> oh, Wesley, Wesley, here, yeah, you've got no idea. It's a cross you're supposed to be putting in. First the jabs, one, two, three, then from the feet in with the big one. <laughs> <laughs> it's timing, you see. <laughs> Cyril. I'll have to see if I can get odds on his head and his feet leaving the ring in different directions. It must have been an unlucky blow. <laughs> Just have to catch it wrong, you know. And how long have you got to wear that thing for? Come back in a fortnight, he says. But this could interfere with your training, Cyril. I don't think you appreciate, Wes. This could have been dead serious. There's no question of me fighting like this. All right, come on. How much did you dash him for him to wrap that round you? Go ahead. I didn't have to dash them. He took x-rays and everything. There's no way, Wes. I mean, would the British Boxing Board of Control allow anyone to go in the ring with a brace on their neck? No. You'll just have to face him. But like I said, he's, he's a bit of a lad, really. Hey, hey, I don't go around fighting people. I've got a position to keep up. I'm sorry, Wes. There's no alternative. Don't worry. I'll coach you. I'll teach you everything I know. Oh, great, great. Then we can both wear a neck brace. You wouldn't believe it. You know the calf where I'm working now, the black calf? It's a fellow what gets in there. Easy in training for some kind of fight as well. Why you men can't sort things out more sensible, I don't know. A man's got to do what a man's got to do, ma'am. Big fella he is and all like the side of a house. Must meet him. Might have a tip for me. Who's he fighting? Oh, some terrible fella. Horrible type. In the motor trade, I believe. <laughs> How do you mean? What's his name, this fella? Oh, do you know? It's a funny name. Like the werewolf. The werewolf man, you know. What werewolf man? Oh, you know. He had this stuff what he swallowed when he was nice and then he turned. You know the fella in the story. Yeah, man, but the fella in the calf, what was his name? Oh, I'm telling you. It's on the tip of me tongue. Declan. <laughs> What's that got to do with the werewolf? Well, that was him, wasn't it? Declan Hyde. <laughs> <laughs> and this fella, he was definitely after the frothy drink, not before. Ma'am. That's the fellow that's fighting now, Wes. <laughs> no. I'll go in there tomorrow and I'll murder him. <laughs> you need to do some sparring, Wes. I could get Jimmy Boylan down. Hey? Hey, I'm not sparring with Jimmy Boylan, Cyril. The human brain is very delicate. I can't afford to get it knocked about. I'm beginning to think you were right. Maybe we should negotiate with this fella. Oh, I see. It's all right for me to get my brain knocked about. Mine is not very delicate, I suppose. Hey, Cyril, your mam's pot dog, it's fragile. So is a Ming vase. But you take a lot more care of one than the other. In here, Ming vase. In there, souvenir of Puffelli. <laughs> <laughs> this idea of yours, that you are some kind of superior intellectual person, you know what it is, don't you? It's cobblers, that's what it is. <laughs> Down through the ages, this is what has been old in the working classes back. This resentment against the intellectual. I don't remember that you was all that dead brilliant at school. Hey, well, I was clever enough to keep it dark, wasn't I? I mean, if Einstein had gone to our school, what? A swat like him? I'd have given him five minutes. He'd have been crying his eyes out and looking for his front teeth. There'd have been no theory of relativity. It's this distrust against the intellectual what is old in the rest of the country back. Well, if intellectuals are so smart, how come you never see one driving a Rolls Royce, eh? Smart, Ali. You name me. One intellectual, what drives a roller? Rolf Faris. <laughs> Rolf Faris is not an intellectual. Oh, come on. You've seen where he just, like, does a splash of paint. 
And then he turns it into a fantastic picture of a man on a camel playing the guitar by a water hole or something. I mean, that is intellectual to me. Yeah, well, well, whether or no, <laughs> he has been cocky like this ever since he was in Miss Critchley's class. Blackboard monitor, that's as high as you got. <laughs> Anyone would think you understood the theory of relativity? Well, I do, and that's without even going to night school. Oh, yeah, you don't know nothing about the theory of relativity. Try me. All right. <laughs> <laughs> what is the theory of relativity? <laughs> I'd tell you, but you wouldn't understand it. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to grasp it. What is the theory of relativity, any road? Come on, come on. We all want to know. Okay. You're driving along. Say you're going towards town and you chuck your chip paper out the window. Yeah, that's typical of him. I never do that. I always wait and see if it can pull up by one of them cars with a little sliding sunroof and pop it in there. <laughs> Keep it and tidy, that's me. Einstein might go chucking his chip papers down. OK. Einstein is driving towards town, right? And he chucks his chip paper out the window. And to him, the chip paper is disappearing backwards, right? OK, yeah. Right. Now, you are walking on the pavement also towards town, right? And the chip paper gets you wallop on the back of the head. Are you with me? Yeah. Good shot, this Einstein. No, that's not the point. <laughs> that is not the point. Look, see to Einstein. The chip paper was disappearing in the opposite direction to what he was going, but it was going the same way you was going, or it wouldn't have clocked you one on the back of the head, right? So, according to you and Einstein, it was going opposite ways, but you and Einstein was going the same way. See? <laughs> that is the theory of relativity. What is? That is... You still don't get it, do you? I said you wouldn't. It's dead advanced. I don't get it either. <laughs> Look! To Einstein, the chip paper was going that way, so if it had hit him, it had hit him on the nose. But well, he chucked it. I'm talking about the direction it's going. It's the direction that would get him on the nose, but it gets you on the back of the head, even though your nose is pointing the same way as his, and even though it's the same chip paper, which shows that everything is all relative. That is relativity. Where'd you get all this? I was talking to this bloke down the library. Very clever mind. He's completely rebuilt a Vela set motorcycle without so much as an handbook. <laughs> and that's it. That is Einstein's big number one hit. All that about the chip paper. <laughs> that's how he made his name. Well, he did other things as well. It was because of him they discovered atom bombs. I think he was a big con, Einstein. He just blinded everybody with signs. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's not going to do you any good against the lad Zeppelin. You won't blind him with science. It's too thick. So start working on this. I don't think Wesley should be fighting this fella tomorrow, do you, Mrs McGregor? Well, I don't. But it's men, isn't it, Glennis? Suppose so. A man's got to do what a man's got to do. <laughs> but, I mean, he's bigger than Wes and all. Oh, I think that's been taken into account by the handicap. <laughs> what do you mean? The handicap? We don't have an handicap. Oh, I think you'll find I'm right, Glennis. He'll be handicapped. Oh? <laughs> well, it's like you said. Sometimes, Glennis, a mum's got to do what a mum's got to do. I'll have the steak and kidney pie, and uh, Declan here will have the lamb cutlets, boiled potatoes, carrots and peas, and chips on the side. You know what? Lamb cutlets? Yeah. Lamb? He always has sausage, egg and chips. He's fighting tonight. He's got to treat himself. And it's the protein. Oh, no. <laughs> no, no, that's dead that old lucky. He wants to wear the same clothes he always wears, get out of bed the same side, eat the same food. He'll have sausage, egg and chips. I wouldn't feel right serving him nothing else. <laughs> hey, I, I reckon she's right, you know, Pat. I mean, change your habits, change your look, eh? I'll tell you what, love, I'll have double sausage, eh? I'll make it triple and you'll not see it on the bill. In fact, you'll not see it on the plate. I'll put that much gravy on for you. When I say break, break quickly and clean. Right, I don't think I can watch this. I'm going outside. 
Sort of old in his own. It's not all one way. He definitely trod on the other fella's toes one time. With his head. do now is use the elements of surprise, like try hitting him. <laughs> I don't think he's really it. I think he's probably feigning more. I'm beginning to think the authorities are deliberately persecuting Mr Shah. There's nothing wrong with them sausages, there can't be. Six of them he had. You're doing great. Do you want me to throw in a towel? No, no. My plan is to let him tire himself out killing me. <laughs> Come back and haunt him. Oh, you've got that really good punch in there. Eh? I could see it got through to him, cos his eyes kind of wobbled, and I thought for a minute he was going to be sick. Excuse me. Can I borrow your bucket? <laughs> Failure to come out for the start of the round. There's only one way the ref can award the fight. That was a great punch, Wes. I told you to concentrate on the body. Didn't half clout me one round the head, though, Cyril. I mean, his guts will get better, but it's my brains. How do I know whether my brain's damaged? Of course it's not. Come on, here's a test. Tell us the theory of relativity again. I can't. Of course you can. The chip paper, you know. Oh, yeah. Einstein. He's driving towards town in his car and he chucks his chip paper out the window and it's going that way to him, only that way to you. But it gets you on the back of the head, whereas it would have got him on the nose even though your nose is pointing the same way. See? You're all right. Glennis, go and phone Dr Marnie. <laughs>